Boom. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our attendance update for our COVID town hall meeting. I am Chris Haggerty, and with me is Mr. Will Patooch. Good evening, everybody. Hope all is well and healthy with you and your families. As we begin all things at Cathedral Prep and Villa Marie Academy, we begin with prayer. And I ask you to join me in a prayer that I found written by a member of the theology department at Xavier University, which I was thought to be very, very appropriate for what we're about, what we're facing the last several months and what we're going to face in the coming months as well. So please, you can just quiet yourselves and we'll start with prayer. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, amen. Loving God, we ask for strength and you gave us difficulties to make us strong. We ask for wisdom and you gave us problems to solve. We ask for prosperity and you gave us purpose and brains to use. We ask for courage and you gave us fears to overcome. We ask for patience and you gave us situations where we were forced to wait. We ask for love and you gave us troubled people to help. We ask for justice and you called us to be just and lead with integrity. Lord, we have received nothing that we wanted or asked for, and yet we receive everything that we needed. And for this, we give thanks. And in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. And again, welcome to everybody for joining us. First of all, thank you very much to all of you parents for giving us the gift of your son and daughter to spend their four years of high school with us. We know all well, I know as a father of four who went through the walls of the halls of Villa Am Prep, that it's a sacrifice and we appreciate you being here. We also appreciate the patience that you've had, the patience that we've all had to have in going through this pandemic that we have. And we're now to a point where we've made some decisions as a mission leadership team to possibly tack a bit as we look at the next several months and where we're going. Where we've been, and where I'm very proud to say this as president of the school, and I don't know that there's another school in the area can say this. We've had one single day where we've had full remote of no, no in-person instruction. And the only reason that happened is because we were, we dealt with, we're dealing with a positive case on a Sunday and simply didn't feel confident enough to have it accurately contact traced. So on a Monday, we went full remote. The following Tuesday, we were right back. What we promised at our town hall meeting in July, we're delivering. And we're doing it because we've got a dedicated administrative team, dedicated number of employees, and incredibly dedicated teachers. And I'm very proud of all of them. While schools across the Fruited Plain are closed, haven't been in person, have been off for three weeks or five weeks or several weeks or never, our faculty and staff have come in like warriors and answer the bell every single day. And for that, we're thankful. And I hope you're thankful too. And if you'd ever like to do an act or and a random act of kindness for one of them, I'm thinking a certificate to a wine and spirit store, the local beer distributor, or something else that they might enjoy would be something very nice, a gift card of some kind, because they've worked really hard. And again, I'm very proud of them. So where we are as a school and where we are in the county and we're reflecting. So our county numbers are coming down, thankfully. We had a rough November, rough December, rough first part of January, but now we're on a bit of a downside. We're all hearing the same thing in the news. We're all hearing that there are mutations and different strains coming. We don't know what that's going to bring. What we do know is the, the information that we have now and that we're probably in the best place we've been in the last three to four months. In terms of our employee vaccinations, we are part of the 1B group in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And right now we're still in 1A. 1A is 65 years or older, or people who might have underlying conditions. So the distribution hasn't gone well. We have an unbelievable bright kindergarten class, Mr. Petucci, at Mother Teresa Academy. Absolutely. And I'm thinking they could probably do a better job at figuring out how to distribute the vaccine <laughs> than our leaders in Pennsylvania. But we've got to deal with what we have. And what we have is no idea when 
these vaccinations are coming to the employees. We have not been given a date. We don't know. We thought a month ago it might be in February. Doesn't look like that's going to hit at all. We'll let you know when we know, but we'll feel a lot better when we can get our employees and teachers vaccinated. That said, I'm going to ask Mr. Patouche to share with you results of our survey that you filled out and thank you for taking the time to do so. And then we're going to come back and talk about where we're going to go from here. Thanks, Mr. Haggerty. Um, so uh, a couple of weeks ago, sent out a, a survey link to all of our families, you know, asking uh, to answer a couple simple questions in terms of, you know, what are they, what are you doing in terms of attendance, and why are some of the decisions that are being made being made? And I and I really appreciate to uh, the 204, or I'm sorry, 424. Uh, parents that reached out uh, with that uh, with the responses for us um, total that represented about 499 students um, in the school. Um, so again, that gives us you know a, about two thirds um, of our of our student body in term you know responses. Um, some of the data you know obviously surveys and and you know how that all comes in is is obviously a pretty imperfect science in a lot of ways, but um, it was a very good showing to say the least. So on one of the questions, how does your son or uh, son's daughter attend classes? 22% uh, of the respondents been saying fully remote on assigned days, 66%. Sometimes in person, but mostly remote said about 12%. Um, in terms of actually, you know, button share um, evidence on this, does, <laughs> that actually doesn't really support some of these numbers. Um, but again, that also depends on who responded to the survey. Um, we're, we're looking at, uh, we've had on average between, I mean, what would you say, Chris? Um, you know, uh, 75 to 90 yeah. students um, on each campus uh, prep and villa every day um, and you know we've we've been you know getting that feedback from parents and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go um, so again the number of students actually coming in on a daily basis has been has been pretty low or those that are coming in on their assigned days has actually been pretty low um, in the grand scheme of things and that's happened for a variety of different reasons right that's happening um, some of that is you know concerned about why and, and we'll talk about that in the next question um, and we'll go into this. So the next one was, you know, why are people keeping their, their sons or daughters home um, fully remote? Um, you know, health concern for your children, health concern for immediate or extended family members, 9.4 um, and then 11 percent. So a little under 20 percent of the respondents indicated that as their primary reason. Um, uh, 12.4 percent, you know, said uh, that's that's what they their you, you know, your children want to do. Uh, we know that some of our students have have gotten pretty comfortable going to school from home. Um, you know, Chris and I remarked to each other, um, and it, what was this October when we were having this conversation, um, that maybe we did remote education too well. Um, I, I I don't know. Possibly uh, is that a thing? Um, convenience was 4.2%, 44% said coming in on assigned days and then other, and that's for a variety of reasons, everything from, you know, concerns about athletics, of wanting to make sure that they're going to be um, able to play in playoffs and things like that to, um, you know, a variety of other indicators or, or people saying like, oh, well, I'm, we're waiting for the weather to get better or transportation has become an issue because of our public school district or something along those lines. So that's been, you know, some of those results uh, and where that's come. Now, the next to the last question, and this is where you know some folks had reached out um, to, to you know the administrative team. Um, the question about moving forward, how would you prefer your sons or daughters to attend? And and uh, we had about 16% said fully remote to stay the the, the course that they've been on uh, doing that. Uh, remain uh, hybrid on assigned days like we've been doing uh, orange and black days on the uh, the prep campus, blue and white on the, uh, the villa campus. 26% uh, again, uh, and then in school daily, about 58% of the respondents said um, that they would, um, you know, be would, would prefer to be in school every day. So it, look, full, full disclosure, we, we are completely aware that some of our young gears are gaming the system, right? No, sir. We, we we know this, and we're playing eeny, meeny, miny, mo as to when do I come in and when don't I come in, and quite frankly. Uh, some of our heroes have been the ladies in the attendance office trying to keep straight who's in the building, who's not in the building, who said they were full remote but they showed up today, or who didn't show up, who we think should be here but they're not, and they decided that, I don't know, their pajamas felt good that morning and they were going to stay in bed and, want, you know, take school from, you know, with a pillow. So we, we understand all that, and but we've gotten this far. Right. We've gotten this far. And we're ready to make a move. Right. So, and it's and it's and it's pandemic, and we understand, yeah. you know, the, the level of flexibility had to be a lot higher 
on the you know earlier in terms of like sorting out where people were uh but now it's starting to get as as, as chris indicated it's getting to that point where it's like eh, you know there there's you know a lot of students not showing up on exam days and, and those kinds of things and and i think parents are giving their kids the benefit of the doubt because it's a pandemic and we all feel bad for for our young ones all right so just a quick reminder of what we're doing in terms of our our safety protocols and precautions again uh face masks are required in all classes at all times um that's been proven by cdc all research to be the number one preventer of the spread of COVID, right? So we can't ever forget that. Again, we're doing temperature checks on entry of the building every single day, uh, cleaning the desk between classes, air filtration systems are in all of our classrooms. Um, again, you know, drinking fountains have been disabled, increased hand sanitizing stations, hallways and common areas. We're also using a digital pass system so that we can have a better idea of like where students are going and those kinds of things. Because at the end of the day, to stop the spread of, of COVID-19, it's, it's about doing all those little things right. Mm -hmm both in school and out of school. And so that's where schools around the country that have returned a higher percentage of students than we've seen in the buildings every day, um, that's what they're doing, right? And, and, it's, and it's that community commitment to doing those little things the right way to ensure that we can get more students into the building. And I, I, I forgot to shout out to our warriors in our facilities department, Absolutely. Ross Oresco and Mike Mishler and their team for literally keeping this place sparkling clean and safe and disinfected yeah. at all times. Uh, they, they're, they've done an amazing job and yeah. went above and beyond the call of duty in so many instances. And Mr. Petrucci, I, I do have a quote here from Rochelle Walensky, who is the director of the CDC, mm -hmm. who last week, and I'm quoting this, what we are finding from the science-based literature is that there is more spread that is happening in the community when schools are not open than when they are open. Right. In other words, mm -hmm. schools are a safe place to be right now. And now there's science. I mean, let, hey, we were flying blind in the summertime. We, we haven't faced this, but now there's science behind this. Mm -hmm. The science is saying the schools are safe and we're buying into that. And we're ready to make, we're ready to attack. Right. And that, and, and also to, you know, to that point, uh, Chris, you know, of all the positive test cases that we've had to contact trace in the building, we, uh, you know, and again, kudos to our teachers, the, you know, maintenance and, and janitorial staffing uh, on this one. We, we still have not had any kind of like a confirmed um, transmission in the building um, in any instance. So anybody that had to quarantine because of a close contact, uh, identified close contact, you know, nobody has actually come down with a positive case. And I hope I'm not jinxing ourselves in that situation, but that's been, you know, a, a real reassuring thing that we haven't seen that, you know, those those close contact quarantines, we haven't seen, you know, massive outbreaks and things like that because of, again, people wearing masks, cleaning their hands, cleaning the desks, uh, cleaning those spaces has been really, yeah. really like what, important. Probably a hundred days or so of school, and we've not found a single instance of the disease being contracted here right. in the building, not one time. And by the way, this guy, he could go to work for the CDC, the government, he's got it all down. Uh, apparently, you know, when you get the phone call or the email from Mr. Petucci and it's about COVID, it means, oh man, it's positive or I'm getting, I'm getting contact traced and we're quarantined. But Will's done a great job and with all the other stuff on your plate. So thank you, no, thank you for sir. that effort. Yeah, it's 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 been a it's been a time, a lot of a lot of fun parent phone calls, right? So those of you that, that I've talked to, it's been. A, uh -huh. um, I, I know that that's a phone call they never like right. to get, but I mean, uh, we're we're you know we want to make sure we're keeping everybody safe and healthy. That's our our number one concern. You bet. So here's where we are. We're now going to give all of you three options, and we would like to know your option by Monday, February 23rd. And here's here's what they are. To either one go stay fully remote, whether you're on it or you like to be on it, you choose full remote. Two, you choose the hybrid, alternating days, just like we've been doing since August. Three, and for you people that have been on our doors knocking, full in person mm -hmm. every single day. Here's the caveat. The caveat is once you choose this, there is no turning back from it until the end of the first quarter which is third quarter, which is March 26th. So you have three options, full remote, hybrid, full in person. Now, the caveat I'm gonna give us is this, we're doing this based on the percentages of the survey. And if those percentages hold, when we're actually asking you to put 
pencil and paper to us with your name. As long as those percentages hold, we believe we can safely bring as many people back in who would like to be here. So we're going to come back after we get all of these numbers and determine can we adequately, adequately and safely bring everybody back who wishes to be here every day, right? So we're counting on the survey, but we're doing this because now we need an exact number. So you're going to make a call on for the fourth quarter. We'll probably ask you to make another call. And we'll ask you again, which of those options we would like, or we might be at the point to say, you know what? Everybody's coming back in. It's time. We'll know more then. And as we all know, this changes literally within every 24 hours. We change the time of this very town hall from 7 o'clock to 630 because the varsity game versus McDowell was going to be tonight at 715. So we backed it up until we had to put the JV team in quarantine because they played against Gerard, who had a team player that was positive. So they're on the shelf for a while. The varsity game gets moved to six o'clock. Now we're competing with the varsity basketball team. That all happened within 24 hours. So we're going to be at the end of March. Your, welcome to Monday night. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, welcome to Monday night is right. But this is where we're going to go. Should you choose to change your call, right? We're simply going to say, this is the call you've made. If your son or daughter has chosen full remote, we're going to ask them to make sure they're signing into every class, camera on in every class. And we'll be taking strict attendance. You must be in uniform and we're going to start paying attention. We have been a little on intentionally. We've been lat. We've been this is a pandemic. Let's chill everybody. But now we're at the point where we want, if you're going to be at home, we want you to have that identical experience. And that means wearing the uniform and camera on at all times, unless the teacher says turn it off. Right? Full remote. If you're hybrid, you're coming in on your day, not the other day. No exceptions. And in person, you're here every day. It's not, uh, could be another six inches of snow tomorrow. I think I'll remote. No, we're not doing that. So you choose to be in person. It's regular school. And we'll need a note from you that there's an excuse for your son or daughter not to be or a doctor's note. So in other words, you choose full remote. We're going back to business here. Right. Yeah, and that's really been, um, you know, just so that everybody has like a pretty clear understanding is, is you know, when we, we talk about like attendance and like the flexibility that we've had up to this point, I mean, God, God bless our teachers. God bless, uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Brown and Mrs. Half to the Villain Prep campuses, respectively. Um, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Herbstreit and Ms. Conroe for, for tracking students down. Um, in the midst of all of this, because it's been it's been a it's been a real you know nightmare because Challenge. it's like uh, you know a lot of students you know they need to be here right that's one of the biggest things um, especially for you know students that might be uh, academically struggling or maybe just not hitting the the, the typical norms of where they they usually um, are academically um, and, and again our teacher you know I reached out to uh, you know a couple teacher groups um, over the last week or so and just said you know had this conversation about. You know, how do you feel about you know more more students being brought in? And that's where our teachers overwhelmingly are at. Is saying like we you know we know that these you know the students need to be in for them to get the education. Um, that's that's the you know they're going to get a way better experience being button chair in person. Um, and we and we understand that some folks need to be fully remote because of because of you know you know medical issues of the immediate family member maybe even the students themselves and we want to be respectful of that. Mm -hmm. But chasing kids around all over the place, I know that you know we got a meeting scheduled with a student or a counselor's got a meeting scheduled or something along those lines, and and they're not there, and because oh well oh well they had a chemistry test or oh you know like oh well we thought it was going to snow. Um, you know, we really do need to get back to business as usual as much as humanly possible. And that's one of the biggest things. Um, you know, we can't be in pandemic paralysis um, forever. Right. Right. So uh, we if you'd like to fire some questions our way, we do have a few minutes. We wanted to keep this to no more than half an hour. So if you do have a question, there should be a little chat bar somewhere and you can type your question in and we'll answer it. We are going to post this within 24 hours. 
so that it can be viewed as a recorded uh, town hall meeting for anybody who missed it. And we'll also be sending a, uh, an email out yep. with everybody. So we're, we're asking you, imploring you to please let us know what your decision is as soon as you come to that decision. Right, and, and I have uh, up on the screen right now, and this will be sent out to all of our families as well in terms of communicating in those decisions that you've made. Again, you know, again, the options are fully remote, hybrid as has been or in person, you know, communicate those either to attendance um, and, and I think it auto edited there, um, the, um, uh, those email accounts, attendance uh, underscore prep at prep-villa.com and attendance at uh, underscore villa at prep-villa.com or else uh, reach out to uh, the Assistant Vice Presidents of Academics and Student Affairs um, on, on the Prepper Villa campuses, uh, Mr. Herbstreit Pratt, Ms. Conroe. Um, over at Villa or else give them a call. Again, they, they know they're gearing up because it's, you know, we're, we're, you know, 750 phone calls and emails coming in um, in the next uh, few days. But again, communicate that over as soon as possible so that we can start getting an idea about numbers because we still have to form, you know, again, if you know what the balance, we're, we're estimating that we know what this is going to look like based off of the survey data as well as what some of our internal data indicates. But we have to make sure that the, the you know, the numbers line up the right way. Um, yeah. moving forward. And and you'll know Haggerty and Patooch are not on there. We have our emails <laughs> disabled at this point in time. So you can get a hold of those folks and they'll get it handled. Will and I are going down south somewhere sometime <laughs> for a few days. Yeah. And then we're and then we're gonna make sure that we quarantine afterwards. Right. Uh, you bet. <laughs> yeah. All right. So questions. Questions. All right. So here's here's a here's a good one. You know, let's let's take a soft one here, uh, kind of quick. All right, so um, we've got a parent that's, or somebody that's uh, asking, uh, I know it's early in the meeting, uh, but the question is how will prom and graduation be handled? We were talking about this earlier today. Chris. Ding, 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 ding. Right. So prom and graduation, we are going to do everything that is legal and safe and ethical to host a prom, to host graduation and baccalaureate. And right now for prom, we have one, two, we have two different sites. We have two different dates. Mm -hmm. One's a larger site. One's a smaller site. For graduation, we're going to be making some phone calls. We are scheduled to graduate at Erie Insurance and Arena. As long as they open up that arena, we're there. Yep. We'll be graduating. Baccalaureate Mass, we have one, two, three churches mm -hmm. and the Haggerty Family Event Center that is being reserved for Baccalaureate Mass. And again, it will all be based on what are the percentages that, of capacity that we can fulfill at this time. Right now, it's 10% indoors. So for example, Haggerty Family Event Center can seat a couple thousand. We can put 200 people in there safely and legitimately legally. So we are working on all of those things. Our full intention, and we, we literally met about this this morning, is we want to go full go as no, whatever normal means anymore, as normal as possible. Right. That's a big piece of that. Um, and, and, and so so as Chris indicated, um, we're doing a lot of covering as many bases as we possibly can. And um, I have to say, like working with some some great vendors over the years on top of our own facilities, mm -hmm. you know, th that flexibility. And, um, you know, obviously the big hope is, is that once spring hits, temperatures start going up, windows are open more, um, numbers keep going the right way. Vaccines are are, you know, available and we and and all that other fun stuff. The hope is, is that we'll be able to open a lot of this stuff up. But just so that everybody's aware, you know, we want to be nimble. We want to be prepared. Um, I told the senior class advisors, I've told, you know, everybody for, for seniors uh, and end of the year events, uh, sports day, spirit, mind and body day, like we're going to have to be ready to move quick. Yeah, that's that's the name of the game right now. We've been and, limber all year, uh, We're nimble all year long. Absolutely. But be, everybody's got to be ready to move quick. Um, in the midst of all of this, right? So Mr. Bertucci informed me also that as the president, I have to go to prom. It's part of the deal. Uh, I'd rather hydroplane on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, <laughs> but you know what? I'll be there. Yep. Oh, yeah. It's it's a time. It's a time. All right. Um, okay. So next question. Um, uh, under what circumstances would a teacher allow the students to turn the camera off? So these are their apps. Well, yep. The, yep. yeah. So the way that the iPads work, and this is one of the things that, um, you know, we've, we've had, you know, internal discussions and banter back and forth um, about has been um, the way the iPads work in teams. If, if students open up another application, even if they do a split screen, um, what that does is it automatically disengages the camera. 
right? And so that's one of the things that, that can be a little bit frustrating. So, you know, for the teachers, but the teachers know that. They've really been able to roll with the punches and things like that. But the teachers are telling the students, cameras need to be on, cameras need to be on, period, mm -hmm. right? And one of the reasons why we designed the systems in the classrooms the way we did was to give as close to the in-person experience. Um, again, uh, you know, having taught for 15 years prior to becoming an administrator on um, high school and collegiate levels, um, as a teacher, and Chris, you know this from your teaching career, right? You're always reading scanning the room. You're always scanning and reading the room, checking for understanding, um, seeing where students are at and things like that. So again, and that also helps the students engage better because they know that somebody's looking at them. They're, you know, you're ensuring, you know, that attention and stuff like that. So that's, um, so if those cameras are off, that's only because of teacher discretion or maybe they're showing a video or something like that where it's like, hey, we don't need to see you right now on some of those items. So I hope that, that helps. Um, all right, here we go. Um, does the same apply to the eighth grade honor students? We have no idea. I'm kidding. Uh, we're gonna, we're, so, I, so would we ask, I would yeah. ask all eighth grade honor right. students to respond to this. Yep. We, um, respond as they would uh, to everybody else. However, I will request that, um, that those um, go out to, and I probably, I'll probably put that in the uh, communication out to, to families, um, that those uh, requests go to Mr. Doherty on the prep campus and Ms. Yep. Hood on the Villa campus because that's the uh, eighth grade honors um, contact, right? We consider our eighth grade honor students to be students of the school. Mm -hmm. They'll be treated the same yep. as Given the same on the campus, yep. right? Absolutely. Um, okay, so next question is, uh, family has three children home, full remote in rural area, no option for any provider in our area, faster service other than uh, hotspot. Having camera and sound takes, so again, so to that family, you know, talk about the quality of the internet connection and having to potentially turn a camera off to be able to stay, you know, linked in the classroom. That's something that uh, we work on with those on a case by case basis. Yes. Case by case. Sorry. Yeah. Um, all right, how will you ensure that test take, this is, these are kind of me questions, Chris, I'm sorry. Um, how will you ensure that test taking will be equitable, home versus in person? Man, the teachers have been working their butts off on this, let mm -hmm. me tell you. Um, you know, kudos to our faculty for the work they've been putting in on this. Um, a, lot, a lot of our faculty have moved over to more uh, project-based assessments um, and have been putting other safeguards in place as best as possible to ensure that assessments are going to be as equitable as possible. Um, at the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, wasn't one of those core values we've got there about uh, integrity? Call integrity. Yeah, I thought that was a thing, right? Um, so um, we definitely, you know, teachers are keeping an eye on those items. And obviously, as the technology is getting better and better, we actually, um, uh, Mr. Crow's in the room here with us uh, from our uh, technology department, rolled out a new app this week to actually um, help limit uh, access on the iPads and things like that uh, moving forward. So that's, uh, that'll be an ongoing battle. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I could just say, you know, is is a father somebody who was, you know, a student? Because uh, this question was asked, kind of, sort of, in July, right? And that was, you know, well, what about cheating? Well, uh, we don't encourage it. See, and it's that's not enough. that's a you that's a, that's a them problem. So our kids know that we have core values. They know that they get what they earn and deserve. And we're gonna ask you, mom and dad, to partner with us. If you choose full remote, if you choose hybrid, if they're at home, to be honest mm -hmm. and, to, and to have that integrity and the courage to do the right thing all the time, right? And if it doesn't happen and people are gaming the system, we can only do so much about that. So we would ask parents to partner with us to help us with that specific core value of integrity. Absolutely. Well, it is a good question. What if a student's posed with a safety risk and wants to stay home? Example, seeing a large amount of classmates going to a party and not following code of COVID protocols uh, and chooses full in person. So they chooses full in person. Yeah, so if they've already chosen full in person and they see a bunch of students mm. going to a party and engaging in... I, uh, the, again, there, of course, there are exceptions and everything. That would be a personal conversation that they should have with Mr. Herbstritt. Mrs. Conero or Mr. Batuch, yep. right? Yeah, and that's and and there is a level of flexibility, but again, we're gonna we're gonna definitely say, hey, let's let's stick to our guns, and that goes back to what we've been saying um, uh, from the very beginning about this. For this whole situation, for this whole thing to work, um, it takes the the community to do you know everybody in the community to do, do their part. Mm -hmm. That partnership is unbelievably important, and that's something that. Um, 
you know, and, and we know they're teenagers, right? They 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 want to be social, they want, you know, and, and things like that. But again, everybody needs to do their part to ensure um, that there's going to be a, um, uh, you know, a, a good outcome in these situations, right? Um, all right. Next one. Uh, is there a threshold, uh, school-wide positivity rate, for example, at which you would uh, revert to a more uh, remote or hybrid model? Some of us may be reluctant to um, lock in a decision uh, for a full quarter when, uh, as you have noted, uh, conditions can change quickly. Yeah. So we've we've probably had a threshold. If we were to get to somewhere between, I would think, 10 and 15, 20 positive cases at one time between campuses, we would probably take a time out and reevaluate where we are. And that's a legitimate question, but again, we don't want to have, we'll be ready for different scenarios, but we don't want to assume a scenario because that's gotten us nowhere in this pandemic. So we're not going to try to figure out what the future is going to hold. We're going to deal with things day to day. And if we have, again, and we've done this, if we have to pivot within an hour on a Sunday night, we'll pivot and say, you know what? Everybody stay home tomorrow. So I guess what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is this, it's trusting us to make the right decisions that we're not going to put our kids, our people, our faculty, or you or your families at risk. That's on us. And we're going to ask you to trust us on that. Absolutely. Uh, next one note, I made a typo in the, uh, the presentation. Monday's the 22nd, not the 23rd. Being that we were off yesterday, even though we were in with meetings and things like that yesterday, um, I, I just jumped a week thinking today was Monday, and, and so I put the 23rd. It's actually the 22nd. Mr. Patucci usually does that with the kids to make sure they were paying attention, so congratulations. <laughs> glad it was, it was an intentional mistake. Uh, why not? Sure. Right. Um, all right, so here, here's, here's one that we've talked about a lot, Chris, right? Uh, if we go uh, full-time in person, will the whole class be allowed uh, full in person, seniors in particular? We're going to make that call at the end of the third quarter. And if we if we had, if we were going to do a pecking order, it would obviously be the senior class first. If we were to bring two classes in, we would probably then go to the freshman class. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because they've had one day, two days, this entire year where they've been together in one place at one time. That's it. And we really, I mean, it's very difficult. They've not been able to form that bond is a class so it would probably be seniors freshmen and then between juniors and sophomores will flip a coin yeah yeah and that, and and to those points uh, that's that's a hundred that's been 100 percent of our thinking since um since september probably once we started entertaining them. and we want to get there yeah Just so you know <laughs> we want to get there gotta that's do it the safely goal. gotta right. do it safely here people um, all right, so next question, what about sports day? I know it's not uh, related, but no one's talking about it. I mean, I did mention it briefly. But we're doing it. Yeah, we're doing um, sports again, day. we're we're basically gonna be working to uh, make sure sports day um, happens uh, safely. Um, again, within the protocols and guidelines that are gonna be in place. There Will sports day look like it has in the past? Probably not. But what has looked like it has in the past over the course of the last 11 months? Not much. Right. So, but we are definitely going to try to make sure that we're going to make those happen. Uh, all right. Next question. Uh, what is happening to senior photos in tuxes? I'm guessing this is a prep parent, right? Um, yes, I actually um, am playing phone tag right now with the um, uh, the folks over at Life, Life Touch and Prestige um, to get a second sitting uh, because the photo regulations have changed. So we're going to actually try to get a second sitting to get the uh, the, the more traditional photos taken care of. Nice. Uh, because we know how important for both campuses, right? So the uh, the girls in the, um, uh, the the black cape or, or drape or whatever it is, right? Um, and the uh, the boys in the uh, black yeah. tuxedo so yeah. that we can have those for the, uh, the yearbook and that the parents can have those. Because um, I know a lot of our parents really, really like those um, at the same time. All right, we'll, uh, take, we'll take a couple more then we'll roll. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we're getting a long time here. Um, uh, question here, will there be homeschooling even though it was supposed to be uh, in fall, but you guys said you would have them can. Uh, oh, homecoming. Oh, oh, homecoming, homecoming. I'm sorry, yeah. I misread that. Right. Um, homecoming and prom at the city. Well, prom is going to be the priority. Yes. Right. So again, this this is about those who this might be their last chance to have that experience. And that would be the seniors. So right now we are hoping and counting on doing a prom 
I would say at this point in time, we've not discussed a homecoming dance on top of the prom. So right now, it's we're focused on prom. Right, um, that is absolutely the priority. And if we can, um, um, if we can make that again prom happen, homecoming. That's going to depend on how how everything looks, what the re regulations and things like that. Is those are. Um, um, uh, or not. OK, here we go. Um, all right, so next one. What will seating at lunch be like for fully in-person students? So seating at lunch, we'll have assigned seats. Mm -hmm. They will be a bit closer than they have in the past. We're going to bring down all the cafeteria tables. We'll keep them spread out as much as we can. So uh, the reason for the assigned seating, again, sure there be a positive case in school, which again has been a rarity. It's been a rarity we'll be able to contact trace those who have been sitting around the person who may have symptoms and may or may not test right. positive. And that's um, that's actually on the contact tracing. That's actually been a, a sticking point um, for for the entire year, right? Because students have their masks off when they're when they're eating at lunch. So even though we have them spaced out, the recommendation from the um, uh, from the health department has been anybody that's sitting at, at that table needs to uh, needs to quarantine um, as a result as a close contact as a result. So that's something that's already kind of a sticky situation. So again, we're going to keep the students as as spaced out as possible, but obviously having more students in. Again, we are roughly at on a daily basis um, on the Villa campus at about a 60, 50, 60 percent capacity on the prep campus between a 40 and 50 percent capacity, even at that 50 percent right now at the well, 50 percent. Right. You know? right now in our lunch room, you, you could shoot a cannonball. You wouldn't hit anybody. We even have free lunches yeah, for goodness sake. What, what else can yeah, we do? Right free now? lunches. <laughs> there, it's, I have to tell everybody, it's really sad. You walk through the hallways between classes and it's it's quiet. It's 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 empty. It's it's not the same. It is not the same. And you know, we're in a people business here. Yes. Right? This is a people business that we're in. We're family. And our family's not here right now. One more? One more one more? Uh yeah. um, do we have one more? All right. Let's let's try to find a good one. Um Get a lot of repeat questions. Yeah, a lot, lot of repeat right. questions here. I, I apologize. Um, uh, will the in-person classes be adjusted? No, that one doesn't. I'll, I'll answer those ones separately. Um, no, we're good. I, I think we're pretty good. I'm gonna. I'll reply uh, to everybody in the uh, the question and answer box here uh, once we're wrapping up. But I don't know how much there's, um, you know, for for the good of the group, right? Um, on a lot of these. So, well, listen, everybody. Uh, again, we greatly appreciate your attendance tonight. We appreciate your patience. We appreciate you choosing Prep and Villa to be the high school home for your son and daughter. It is not lost on us that this is a difficult year. We understand that. We're doing our level best to make it the best possible experience we can, given the cards that we can play. So we're going to ask you again, please respond by the 22nd. Let's get your answer in and hopefully we can move on from here. We'll plan to meet again in probably a month or so, or at least by by email to keep our communication lines open. And with that, I, again, I want to thank everybody. A quick little shout. I missed one shout, and that's to Bill Flanagan, who's been managing the athletics the whole year and managing it very, very well. And I can't think of maybe one or two instances where we had to shut a team down because it was us. It's usually somebody else, and then we got to shut down. So kudos to all the athletes and the moms and dads who are taking care of your athletes as we're taking care of them on this end. Wish you well. God bless to all of you. Godspeed. Please be safe. Please pray for everybody affected by this awful, wretched disease, and pray that we can get on the other side of it real soon. Well, thanks to you as well. Oh. Thank you, boys, man. God bless everybody. Take care. Have a good evening.